Welcome back, guys, to the third episode of the Football Researcher Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about who to pick up in fantasy football for 2021. And so how this is going to work is I'm going to pick the top three players from each position in fantasy football. So quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, kicker, and defense. So we're going to dive right into it with the number three for quarterback. And this may surprise some of you. It is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, I think the Vikings could make the playoffs. I think they will make the playoffs. I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender contender just yet but I think um they'll make the playoffs and I think they could go far so Kirk Cousins can pick up Dak Prescott stats like that he can pick that Dak Prescott stats up really fast and um he's got a lot of weapons he's got Adam Thielen Justin Jefferson he's got Irv Smith and the only reason I didn't put him at number two is because of Dalvin Cook they have Dalvin Cook and he runs the ball a lot so that he runs the ball a lot, so that um, there's less opportunities for Kirk Cousins to get a lot of points. But I think, even though I think Dalvin Cook will be kind of more of a dual threat um, this year, this upcoming year in 2021. But um, yeah, number three, Kirk Cousins. I think he's gonna do really well. So number two is Russell Wilson. Now I've heard a lot of talk about him getting traded. Personally, I don't think he is gonna get traded. But this is, like, if he doesn't get traded. So if he doesn't get traded, he's got so many weapons on the Seahawks. He's got DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. He's got that Hollister guy. He's um, he's, a tight, he's the tight end for the Seahawks. I forgot his um, his first name, but I know his last name's Hollister. But And he can also pick up Dak Prescott points or stats like that. But um, um, the only reason I didn't put him at number three... This is the difference between Kirk Cousins and Russell Wilson, is that they don't the Seahawks don't have much of a running game. I know they have Chris Carson. They have a lot of running backs that, but they don't have any like off the charts good running backs. But um, they have Chris Carson, but he's more of a dual threat I think than Dalvin Cook. But yeah, so number two, Russell Wilson. Number one is obviously. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, he's got insane accuracy. He can he is like he's just so good. And he's got so many weapons. He's got Travis Kelsey, Terry Kill. He's got Clyde Edwards Hilaire, which is kind of a dual threat. He's got McCole Hardman. He's got um Demarcus Robinson, Sammy Watkins. But um yeah, Patrick Mahomes has so many weapons. He can just throw from any angle. But um <clears throat> Like, he can, he's just, like, insane. He can, I, again, wouldn't be surprised if they won the Super Bowl. Um, and, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is n- no doubt the best quarterback in the league and the best quarterback to pick up in fantasy football. But, um, so, yeah, that is the quarterback position. Let's move on to the running back position. Number three, this may surprise some of you, Derrick Henry's number three. Derrick Henry's got to be in the top three. Or, yeah, top three. But Derrick Henry is just so good. He can... He um, he is... I don't believe he'll get as many carries. I don't think he'll get as many touchdowns. That's why I didn't put him or no, at number two or number one. But Derrick Henry, his... What I like about Derrick Henry is that his sweet spot is normally around like the 40 or 50 yard line. So you get six points for the touchdown and like four or five extra points for the for the carry. So that's what I like about him. You can get like 10 points, 11 points in, in one, one play. So yeah, but I think he'll be a little bit more of the red zone, red zone guy, like from like the one or two yard, two yard, two yard line. I'm not saying he won't be good. I'm saying that he won't he won't be as good as last year. He'll still be good, but number two, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is so elite. He's kind of like Derrick Henry with running from like the 50, 60 yard line out and then running for the end zone. But now, this is the reason why I didn't put him at number one. 
is because Nick Chubb does not play well in the rain or snow, I've noticed. It's, bec- it's because, um, like, two years ago, or a year ago, sometime in 2019, he played in a rainy game against the Patriots, and he had, like, two fumbles. Like, two fumbles um, on, like, um, he had two fumbles. So, that is the only reason I didn't put him at number one is, is because he does not play good in the rain or snow. But, um... Yeah, hopefully he's not going to be injured for half the season, like like um, like 2020. But I don't think he will. I think he's pretty tough. Um, number one is obviously Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook can pick up yards. He can get to the end zone from basically anywhere on the field. He is more of a red zone guy than Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. But he can just... He can just... He's, like, insane. He can just pick up, like... 20, 25 yards off contact, but um, and, and again, um, he's. I think he's going to be more of a dual threat. Like Derrick Henry is not really a reception. He doesn't. He doesn't um, catch a lot of passes. Nick Chubb is a little more, a little bit more like that. But um, again, he's not like. None of them are really like passing like. A really like 50 50 kind of deal except like Christian McCaffrey but um yeah Dalvin Cook number one on the list obviously because he's he's gonna be dual threat and he's just all around the best running back in the league and the best running back for fantasy football so I definitely recommend you pick him up if you have the chance you probably have to be like first number one pick to get Dalvin Cook <laughs> but um now we're going to move on to the wide receiver position. Now the wide receiver position is a little difficult because there's a lot of good wide receivers. There's a good wide receiver on every team. But I think here's the top three. Number three, Stefan Diggs. Um, Stefan Diggs can, like, he's really good. He, I think he's better with the Bills than with the Vikings. But, um, yeah, Stefan Diggs, he can destroy any defense he can he's fast and Josh Allen they don't have much of a running game so that's why I put him at number three and because he's kind of their only weapon besides John Brown but yeah they don't have much of a running game so Josh Allen kind of has to pass a lot and Josh Allen is really good so Stefan Diggs is there I think he got like 100 catches or he set a record for, like, more than 100 ca- catches. Like, he set the record for franchise receptions, I think. Something like that. But um, he got a lot of touchdowns. His sweet spot is, like, in the 15, 10-yard line. Well, 15, 10-yard line, and then kind of, like, the 40-yard line. <laughs> um, yeah. And number two, this is, um, obviously, you have to pick Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill's number two, definitely. I, the reason I didn't put him in number three and I put him in number two because he can run, I think he can run like 26, 27 miles per hour. That's insane. He is so fast. And he's got Mahomes thrown to him, so that's all, always a good thing. But, um, yeah, Tyreek, he can just, he can jump like, it, lo- it seems like he jumps like six feet, five feet in the air. That's what it looks like. But, um, yeah, Tyreek Hill is obviously got to be in the top three. And he catches – he, like, gets touchdowns from, like, 50, 60 yards out. So, again, you get the six-point touchdown, and then you get, like, five extra points for the the yards that he got. So, it's, like, 12 points. But, um, yeah, Tyreek Hill, obviously. And the only reason I didn't put Tyreek Hill at number one is because they have a bunch of other weapons. And like I said in the first episode, I don't think he'll get as many receptions. But, um, yeah, the only reason I didn't put him at number one is because they have a lot of other weapons that weapons that Mahomes can throw to. So, that's the only reason why I didn't put him at number one. So, number one, I was kind of debating on this whether I should put Terry Kill in or Devontae Adams at number one. Devontae Adams, I, I chose Devontae Adams, though, because he is so good. He's got Aaron Rodgers thrown to him, which obviously the MVP, the reigning MVP, really good. 
but um, he's he can he's not as fast as Stefan Diggs or Tyreek Hill, but I think he doesn't need speed to to be great because Devontae Adams can literally tear up any defenses. He usually catches it from like usually the Aaron Rodgers snaps the ball and usually Tyreek um not Tyreek Hill. Devontae Adams just um is kinda like just stops, catches it, and runs for the end zone. <laughs> he can just he can tear up any defense. Especially the Jets. <laughs> um and the Lions. Um but um yeah Devontae Adams obviously is number one. Well, not not too much not by a long shot, because Tyree Kill I, again, I was debating whether or not I should put in Devontae Adams or Tyreek Hill, but I chose Devontae Adams. But, um, tight end position. Now we're getting into, like, the kicker, defense, tight ends. Not as many to choose from. Um, tight end position. Number three, Robert Tunyon for the Green Bay Packers. Um, the only reason I didn't put him higher is because the other two are really good. <laughs> and also because they have Devontae, he, uh, Aaron Rodgers has Devontae Adams to throw to, so. I mean, usually, Devontae Adams catches like 50% of the targets, it seems like. Every time, every time Aaron Rodgers throws the ball, he gives it to Devontae Adams, it seems like. But Robert Tunyon is number three. I would put in Jared Cook, but he just got cut. So, <laughs> I kinda had to change it. But, um,. Yeah, Robert Tunyon, number three. And, again, the only reason I put him at number two, well, there's two reasons, because the other two are really good, and Devontae Adams. <laughs> That's why. But, um, yeah, um, Robert Tunyon's sweet spot is, like, the six-yard line. <laughs> like, in the red zone is his sweet spot. Like any tight end, <laughs> basically. But, yeah, number three, Robert Tunyon. Number two, George Kittle. Now, George Kittle, um... He can, I know, um, the, first of all, the only reason I put him at number one is because number one is really great, <laughs> is better, I think, but because he doesn't have a quarterback. They don't have, the 49ers do not have a quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo was not, did not, I don't think they deserve to be in the in Super Bowl 54, but, um, yeah, George Kittle is so good. He is like he can like he can stiff arm, he can block, and that's what sets him aside from the other tight ends. That's what makes him special is because he can block. He can block very well. I think Kyle Shanahan was like if you can't block, you can't be on the team basically. Is I think that's what he said. But um yeah. Um, George Kittle, number two. And number one, I don't think there is a, like, he is just so good. Travis Kelsey. Obviously, Travis Kelsey. It has to be Travis Kelsey. But, um, obviously, he has to be in the top three. Some people may put George Kittle above Travis Kelsey, but I put Travis Kelsey above George Kittle easily. But, um... Yeah, Travis Kelsey, he's got Mahomes thrown to him. So, yeah, obviously. That's always a good thing. And then, um, so, yeah. Travis Kelsey, he can, again, like I said in the first episode, um, um, I think that Travis Kelsey is going, usually a sweet spot is like 15 yard line. No. What did I say? I said I said that instead of like a five step turnaround, catch it, he'll run for like fifteen yards out and then catch it. <laughs> so that's what I said. I forgot about that. But um yeah, Travis Kelsey, number one, easily. I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah. That's the tight end position. Now we're gonna go to the kickers. This is a little, this is hard, because I don't know many kickers. I know, like, ten, maybe. But I think here's the top three that I need. Number three, Matt Prater. Now, I know Matt Prater did not have a good year with the Lions this year. 
He's obviously got the longest 64 yard kick, the longest ever. But um, yeah, Matt Prater, I think he'll have a bounce back year. Um, I think he's gonna do well with the Lions. I think he'll be able, actually, I think he'll kick more because Jared Goff, I don't think is that like, is what he, I don't think he deserved to be in the Super Bowl to be completely honest. So, yeah. Matt Prater, number three. Number two, Harrison Bucker for the Chiefs. Um, he was like, Patrick Mahomes and Harrison Bucker were the only ones who came to play in, in the Super Bowl. Harrison Bucker, he's really good. He can kick it, his sweet spot, like 50, 51 yard line. Something like that. But he's really good. He can kick very well. I think he's very underrated. Um, I think he's better than Matt Prater. I think he can kick farther than 64 yards. And not that much farther, but yeah. Harrison Butker, number two. And the only reason I didn't put him at number one is because he's got my home. They've got my homes. So they don't have to kick a lot, except in the Super Bowl. But we don't talk about the Super Bowl here. <laughs> okay, number one, Greg Zerline. Greg Zerline, he got hurt. I'm pretty sure he got hurt. He plays for the Cowboys, not, not the Rams anymore. But he got. I, yeah, he got hurt. I think he hurt, like, didn't didn't he hurt, like, his leg? I think he hurt his leg, his kicking leg. But um, I think he'll, won't, he won't get hurt in 2021. I think he'll be good. I think he'll be very good for the Cowboys. And if, and all that, like, kind of, if Dak Prescott come back, comes back, you never know. They may, Dak Prescott may come out firing. But if he doesn't come back, then Greg Zerline's going to get a lot of kicks. But Andy Dalton's probably the best backup you can want, actually. The best backup. Not saying the best quarterback. Don't get confused by that. Best backup. <laughs> because he was a starter, and he's used to that. So, yeah. Number one, Greg Zerline. Um, defense, the final category. Number three, the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings, their defense can destroy any offense, basically, except the Chiefs, <laughs> obviously. But, um, yeah. And what I've noticed is that in week one, they are – week one is their they, their defense – their defense, obviously. Week one is their, like, sweet spot. And then week two, they get destroyed. But um, week one, they got, like, in the last couple years, they've gotten, like, 15 points in fantasy. So, um, yeah, they've got, he's got, they've got, like, 15, 20 points in fantasy for week one. And that's hard to do for a defense to get 20 points. I know you start with 10 points, but that's hard to do to get 20 points. So, yeah, and they don't – I don't think – they don't give up – what I've noticed is that they don't give up um, touchdowns that often. They give up a lot of field goals. They don't give up that many touchdowns except versus the Chiefs. Again, got to make that – got to make that clear that the Chiefs are the best. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Minnesota Vikings, number three. Number two, New Orleans Saints. And this is kind of revolving around if Drew Brees is going to retire or not. But um, I think the Saints are very good. They have Marshall and Lattimore. I don't think it was a good idea to get rid of Eli Apples, to, to be honest. Wait. Does he? Wait. I forgot. I think he plays for the Giants. I, I think he plays for the Giants now. I think he got traded to the Giants. He was a Saint. But, um, yeah. Um, he's, they got Marshall and Lattimore. Uh, they, got a, they got another guy. I forgot his name. But um, the guy who let the Minnesota miracle happen, <laughs> um, that guy, I don't know if he got cut. I forgot. But, um, yeah. I keep wanting to say it's Will Lutz, but I know he's the kicker. But, yeah, the Saints, number two for their def for the defense. And their defensive line, Cameron Jordan, is very good. Um, yeah. Number one. This is the final thing. <laughs> the final defense. The Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans, is, they've got Malcolm Butler, obviously very good. He made the 
made them win the Super Bowl. Let them win the Super Bowl. Yep, not, Brady was not a part of that at all. Never, not, no. <laughs> but um, Tennessee Titans, they've got Malcolm Butler. They've got... They've got um, Casey. I want to say it's Jordan Casey, but I know that's not it. Casey, the def- defensive lineman. Um, they 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 like they sack a lot. They like they can get a lot of sacks. They can get a lot of interceptions too. They can get a lot of fumbles. Um, but um, yeah, the Titans they can they they can just gobble any up offense. Um, but the only thing I've seen is that they cannot stop the quarterback sneaks. Like, with the, in the wild card game, the first wild card game, if you saw that, the Titans and Ravens, Lamar Jackson got, like, a 40-yard rushing touchdown, which is not too, not too odd for him to get that, but, (laughs) you know, but, um, yeah, Number one, though, Tennessee Titans. I don't think the Saints and Vikings are that good on the rushing with the quarterbacks either. So, yeah. So, that is going to be the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys agreed with me. Leave it down in the comments if you agreed with me. And, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Our next video is going to be um, the... Every team's biggest strength and every team's biggest biggest we- weakness. It may be kind of a long video. But, um, yeah, so comment down below if you're excited to see that. And, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. See ya.